Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Every time you say amen, amen means let it be so. But the dynamics is that the spirit and the bride says come. The spirit is willing, but the bride, a human vessel, must partner with God. When God wants to bless you, you can see a vision or you can see scripture saying that you are the head and not the tail. I assure you if there is no human vessel to, play, to partner with prophecy, it will never come to pass. Promotion comes from God, but who gives you the letter? Demotion comes from Satan, but who gives you the letter? Lifting comes from God, but who becomes a conduit? My God, we live in a world where most people do not respect the ministry of men. That right now, some of you, as you are praying and fasting, your answer is literally in an office. Not in the realm of the spirit. Your answer is literally in somebody's account right now as I speak. Your answer is in within the power of somebody's will. That's why God is called the father of spirits. Do you know why? Because there are times human spirits can be manipulated by Satan and demons to fight the program of God. You will need the father of spirits to access any human spirit and work out his purposes through it. It is the reason why we learn principles like relationship, is the reason why we pray for graces like favor. Do you know why? Because excelling in this kingdom on earth is men dependent. Men dependent. God promised you land in Lagos, you are right. But someone is sitting on that board and can choose to make life miserable for you. Do you agree with me? Yes. The final knowledge that you need to have is that you need to know Satan. While that looks very messy, that is very important. You need to know Satan. The Bible says to be sober and to be vigilant. Be sober and to be vigilant. The opposite of vigilance is carelessness. Nonchalance. It says be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, he roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Jesus called Satan the thief. Not a thief, the thief that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We never knew him as a thief. We only knew him as wicked. Jesus added some more information about him. That means there's something Jesus wants us to know about Satan. Do you know that most of our knowledge about Satan was taught by Jesus himself? He taught about what happens when demons leave people. He taught about the fact that Satan was a murderer. He taught about the fact that Satan was the father of liars. Paul was speaking to the church in Corinth and he says, I fear lest as Satan beguiled Eve through subtlety that he would deceive you from the simplicity of the gospel. That means Satan came and deceived Eve using a tool, subtlety. That's how Satan comes in. Believers who are unaware of Satan and how he works. Let me tell you this. Satan is anything else but a fool. You study just the earthwork of Jesus and see the various ways Satan manifested. Satan manifests through Herod looking for Jesus so he would kill him. You would never see Satan in the scene, yet he was the one there behind. How about Peter? Peter, you would never imagine that Satan would take advantage of Peter. Jesus looked at Peter and said, no, this is not Peter. Get thee behind me, Satan. And I could imagine Peter saying, me? With all this obedience and loyalty and compassion. And he said, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. You don't have to be evil to be a tool in the hand of Satan. You just have to be human. Human that is undiscerning. Human that is ignorant. When Satan uses evil and it does not work, he will use good. The most important thing is to destroy. The tool does not matter. It's the goal. 
my God. It's impossible to have this body of truth that I've told you now and live a defeated Christian life. It will not work that way. Most believers do not know God. Most believers do not know themselves in light of who God is. Most believers have not found their place in life and destiny. And so they live sad, miserable, defeated lives. Most believers do not understand the principles of the kingdom. They do not know how the kingdom system works. I may have observed it once on this stage while preaching that for the most believers, there is no accuracy to their practice of the Christian faith. They combine everything that looks spiritual. For instance, if an average believer is afflicted right now, they are going to call anything that looks like God, Bible, blood of Jesus, Holy Ghost power, you know, fire of, of God, touching and agreeing, sowing a seed. And these things are not wrong, but they all have their, they, they have the roles that they play. They are not all doing the same thing. But because of ignorance, we just combine everything and then one will work. The danger is that there is no mastery because you don't even know which one worked. Was it my singing that produced this result? Was it my giving that produced this result was it the prophetic that produced this result you see we must rise to a higher level of spiritual accuracy do you know what your worship does in the spirit do you know what your prayer does in the spirit what is the difference between praying and worshiping should i choose one or combine both what roles do they play what was the difference between the church praying and what paul and silas did were the effects the same what role does my giving play in the realm of the spirit? At what time should I do it? For what? Is God challenging someone tonight? Knowledge. Because you see, every time we learn God, we see who we should be in light of who he is. We're discussing the king eternal. But I decided to digress just to press on this. It is on from this list, we can now see the value of learning God. Because your theme is attempting to explore the vastness of his greatness and his glory. Now that we have digressed to see this list, just journey with me as I just touch on one or two things and then we'll pray for tonight. Is God helping someone? Please pray in the spirit while you are seated just in a minute that God himself will open your eyes to see blessed be the name of the Lord hallelujah the word king or the word Lord means one who has power by reason of inheritance or preeminence when you call someone Lord as particularly when it relates to Lords as royalties one who has power by reason of inheritance or by reason of preeminence and as a result honor and glory and service must be accorded to such a one you see that now so when you call someone lord the meaning of that is that you have come to acknowledge the vastness of his greatness and his power either by reason of inheritance like it happens to royalties or by reason of preeminence for instance conquest that you searched around and there was no one like that person so it's a status that he keeps re holding i don't watch so much of sports but for those of you who watch wrestling there's what they call the title holder of something heavyweight or boxing boxing so someone becomes the lightweight or middleweight or heavyweight title holder and that person knows he's not free even though he's rejoicing because someone else will train himself to compete with him and he has to keep fighting to maintain that so when you call someone lord in a system it means that many other gods have tried but nobody has been able to take that title <laughs> are we together now you can call someone king but when you now call him king of kings lord of lords it was an ancient way to to show the extent of a man's greatness by contrasting him with other kings so here's how it although you can use it to mean we kings believers but classically it was a way of showing how great someone was so you use the word daughter of daughters 
to show that this is an exceptional child are we together professor of professors so before you talk about the one professor you you have to talk about others and then you now magnify him to pale the excellence of the rest when you call him king of kings you first have to have examine the other kings available and their kingdoms and their vastness then you now show what makes his own above all when you call him lord of lords there are many kinds of lords judges are called lords in many kingdoms you call their royalties lords but many of them are frail many of them are mortal many of them their reign is seasonal in the judiciary you retire once that is your birthday whether you like it or not once it's time on your birthday you go with whatever kind of honor but you are still out of the system so when you call him lord he's the monarch of the universe it's not that he made himself lord is that there's no other person who can be lord listen when it had to do with god swearing he checked he was willing to submit if there was anybody higher than him but not finding any he swore by himself do you know what that means that means the title is here if for any reason among the gods i can find any bell where are you and all the other gods but all of them fell pale look at what happened to dagon before the ark nobody manipulated that process by morning they found dagon on the ground does that look like what will happen in someone's life that everything that has exalted itself above the knowledge of god that in the course of this conference you will watch dagon fight fall before the god of heaven hallelujah praise the name of the lord now there are two things you need to understand about god if you want to understand the extent of the greatness of god you have to explore number one his wisdom number two you have to explore his power it's impossible for you to appreciate god as king and god as lord until by scripture you are able to understand the extent of his wisdom and the extent of his power please give us psalm 104 and for sake of time verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 unbelief is dying from someone tonight in the name of jesus the bible says oh lord how manifold are your works it says in wisdom thou hast made them all the earth is full of your riches you want to appreciate this statement you have to read the first 23 verses and it tells you the artistry and the creativity that was invested in making this ecosystem that we call earth and then the bible says how manifold it's like a man trying to describe a man's result and he takes a deep breath and says how manifold can i continue how manifold are your works in wisdom thou hast made them even the earth is full of your riches proverbs chapter 3 from verse 19 and 20 i hope 3 19 and 20 please give it to us the bible says the lord by wisdom has founded the earth how did he find the earth by wisdom and by understanding hath he established the heavens verse 20 please by his knowledge the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down as dew you want to see the wisdom of god have the privilege of traveling and while you are in the air you are looking on the ground as light as the cloud is for god's sake who is this god you need to stand and look at the trees no election nobody is president over them and yet their organization has not failed this is god you want to know who god is you see sometimes exposure helps you to sing his praises when you look at the trees when you look at the seas when you look at all the creatures to know that god himself made all of this then he now put man as the zenith of his creation when we talk about the king eternal you have to examine the wisdom that resides within him he is not a weak god he does not outsource his creativity it's within him nobody mentors him 
it's not that he goes to school to learn your knowledge depends on the 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 body of truth available to you are we together the knowledge of a doctor as a fresh graduate is not the same as the knowledge of a consultant god does not grow in knowledge he does not grow in wisdom you need to understand you will not meet a better god tomorrow no his part is not as a shining light no no is your own part that is as a shining light because he is the one who is before you it's important to know that god is not a man just because he became a man don't forget that he was god before he became a man god does not learn who will teach him who will be the student what is the name of the school that will admit him by what parameter will you give him admission who will supervise him god for you so the bible says the king eternal the king immortal the only wise god that means when his wisdom shows for the wisdom of every other king stands pale hallelujah Amen. the only wise god you have to explore his wisdom i am amazed I, I i had the honor of studying the human body a bit one time and i had to take a deep breath i mean you would think those statistics are lies just take the brain for instance as a case study do you know that as whole as you are if something happens to your brain your body shuts down immediately what if your brain is healthy and your heart goes bad what if your heart is healthy and something happens to your blood look at the things that need to be in place at every given time to call an individual alive the technology is so powerful that you can sleep lose consciousness and still be alive try to create a product like that how great is our god sing with me how great is our god oh we'll sing how great how great He's our God. Can we sing it one more time? How great He's our God. Sing with me. How great He's our God. How great. You want to see the wisdom of God? Call a doctor to the stage. Call a neurosurgeon. Call somebody who understands. Call a historian to tell you how this earth was before your arrival. Gather these people in their schools of thought. Buy from their knowledge. And at the end of their discourse, you will be on your knees. You will appreciate the vastness. Education was not just supposed to enlighten you. It was supposed to help you praise God more intelligently. The more of him you know on account of the knowledge you now have, the wisdom of God should cause men to praise God. Listen, you are a doctor here. Isn't it amazing how for eight hours you are literally doing a heart bypass or literally i've had the opportunity to watch people saw the skull of a human being literally you would think they are butchering meat in an abattoir and that human being is supposed to come back to life they pick out the brain walk on it take out a tumor and you see the person lying lifeless this is borrowed wisdom because it's in his light we see light listen when you know god as the wise god you will know there is an answer to every problem are, are, are you understanding me there is a, i may not know the answer but there is a way ah there is a way i my wisdom may be limited but when i come to the king eternal the king immortal the only wise god listen to me that financial problem has an answer yes sir it does if you just explore sophia human wisdom you will see the end of it the wisdom of man is a straight line it has an end 
you can get to a point where with all due respect even the leaders in the field will tell you we have not gone beyond this the bible says has thou not known has thou not heard the everlasting god the lord is that true the maker of the ends of the earth he said there is no searching did you stop reading that part of your bible there is no searching that means there are other things you have not yet seen in your life that god can do listen do you know why testimonies are powerful they show us what else god can do when someone comes to testify he captures a reality about god's wisdom that is bigger than your experience is why you join them to praise god i didn't know god could go this far hmm. yes sir that's the song. Iba o, Iba, Iba o, Iba, Iba o. Listen. You know why many people don't worship in church? Is ignorance. They have not explored the wisdom of God. Hmm. You study your Bible. And when you are tired of studying the Bible, look at all the men who are a continuation of your study. Ladies and gentlemen, a woman takes in a seed. She's still alive. She doesn't have to die for the baby to grow. The Bible says, just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones, how does a seed, bones that you cannot break with your hand, but is formed in the womb of a woman and the womb does not have bone itself. And yet bones come out of that womb. Listen, mothers, you've carried many children, that same womb. How do you carry a seed and then there is a separation between flesh and the organs start arranging themselves? The heart does not go to the leg by mistake. By what technology does this happen? The only wise God. Listen, when you know this, it pays to follow that king. Because the same way he rearranges a human body, he can rearrange any destiny. He can put things the way they should be. Only ignorant men see this king as a burden. No. Are we together? And then, a miracle happens when that baby is nine months, for God's sake. A living baby comes out detached from the mother few hours ago maybe minutes ago they were together if anything happened to that separation he would die now the baby is detached alive having his own life not needing the mother's life again One more time. Iba o, Iba. Please listen. If the heavens and the earth were built by wisdom, anything you want to build within that ecosystem must also need the same wisdom. Are you seeing why many things cannot be built well? Your ministry and your organization, listen, please watch this. If it took his wisdom to build the heavens and the earth, and you want to do business within that earth, ministry within that earth, and you ignore the wisdom that created the very ecosystem wherein you dwell, it is not wise. That is going to be beyond just secular education. You need to go to the fountain of wisdom and say, Lord, can I draw from you the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth? Let me use it to create my business. Let me use it to create my home. The Bible says true wisdom is a house built. Anything that refuses to be built is not rebellion, it's lack of wisdom. There is a kind of wisdom you are bringing that is not compatible with that result. And the result is rejecting the wisdom. He's saying there is a kind of wisdom we were mandated to obey. 
the wisdom that comes from the king eternal do you know what that means that every time you stretch in prayer every time you stretch in worship every time you look onto him among the many things you should expect to be drawing is his wisdom the value of your prayer please listen the value of your fasting among the many things that must happen to believers as proof that they are growing is that the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth must begin to reflect in their lives and that has no respect for gender it has no respect for age when the wisdom of the ancient is at work in you it becomes clear to all and sundry that this wisdom is older than you that is the wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers we're going to sing this song again for one moment but let me show you a scripture Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 and then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 here's what it says we are his workmanship created in Christ unto good works which God had foreordained that we should work in them please give us chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent let's read together please one to read that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church help me the manifold multi-layered wisdom multifaceted multifaceted don't tell me you are a Christian and you've met the Spirit of God and you've taken time to invest in prayer and the word beyond just checking your character if I want to know you have received from God I will use the index of wisdom nobody stays close to the king and becomes foolish not traditionally not spiritually no those who do you know why those who are close to him are called 24 elders they have crowns too like he has crowns don't tell me you've been around his presence and your decisions it is clear that the wisdom of the ancient is not there i'm saying that because as we're singing even if it's just for two three minutes what you should be expecting say lord i'm tired of moving around in circles you are the king eternal i tap from this ancient wisdom i'm tired of using experience experience has defeated me a thousand times i need a a downpour a pouring into my destiny the wisdom that created the heavens and the earth wherein i dwell can we pray for one minute please sir, help me son of david shale barato sabra da be ka parusia da listen up now king of heaven e barato shale grem da ka tosia da listen up now rock of ages be prepared to draw be prepared to draw listen up now Wisdom from the ancient of days, the King eternal, the King immortal, the King you invincible. Are infinitely powerful, magnificently wonderful. I can go on and on, on and on, but my words are not enough. Vocabularies will fail me, but permit me to cry out. Iba oh, Iba oh, Iba, Iba oh, Iba oh, Iba, worthy, Iba oh, Shayabara. the second factor 
that we use to examine the greatness of every king is his power after examining his wisdom is he wise enough to be worshipped is he wise enough to receive adoration is he wise enough to be accorded praise is he wise enough to be extolled his works speak to the fact that his wisdom is ancient and the next area is his power the bible says in jeremiah 32 and verse 11 my god it says our lord god thou has created the heavens 17 32 17 our lord god thou has created the heavens and the earth i thought the bible says he created it with wisdom now the bible is saying it was not just wisdom it was wisdom and great power great power so it takes beyond wisdom to create things it takes great power great power in psalm 62 and verse 11 a popular scripture it says god has spoken once twice have i heard this that power help me power power belongs unto god power belongs unto god in deuteronomy chapter 26 from verse 6 deuteronomy 26 we're reading 6 to 9 quickly so that we can pray and the egyptians evil entreated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage verse 7 and when we cried unto the lord god of our fathers the bible says the lord heard our voice and he looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression how did he respond the lord brought us out from egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders verse and and the lord brought us into i really like this scripture two words he brought us out of and he brought us into there are those who can bring men out of but they cannot bring men into the bible says he brought us out of bondage god can bring a man through great power out of pain out of shame out of curses out of yokes out of all kinds of things and then bring you into the manifestation of prophecy listen to me when you know God as King of Kings, when you know God as Lord of Lords, when you know him as the King eternal, the King immortal, the King invisible, the only wise God, three things happens to you very quickly. You may want to write if you're writing my apologies to keep you standing. Number one, the first thing that happens to you is an impartation of the spirit of faith faith is a direct derivative of your revelation of God the spirit of faith anybody who encounters the king the king immortal you encounter his wisdom and his power you encounter him in his capacity as king of kings and lord of lords it will be impossible to be without faith hallelujah Many of us have encountered great men in various capacities, intellectually speaking, financially speaking, and on the strength of what we know about them, we are not careful to take instructions from them because we know they have the power to defend what they say. For instance, if a billionaire you know who is benevolent and you are sure loves you, says go and pick a car, you will not say sorry, say it again. You will go in a hurry with joy and say it's an answered prayer. Your confidence is based on your knowledge of something about him. When you doubt God is proof you don't know him. When you doubt God is proof you need to know him more. You know why you need to know God this much and have the spirit of faith? Because the just lives by faith. Exploits in this kingdom is faith dependent. There are no guarantees to anything in life. You are going to walk on water many times. Walk on financial waters, ministerial waters. And sometimes the sea will be boisterous and yet God will act like he's not seeing it. He wants you to be more conscious of his presence than the storms. 
but the people that do know their god is that still in your bible they shall be strong god is speaking to the women even though he's speaking to all of us this is a season where people of faith must come out and stand i know god concerning my children i know what god has said the one who gave me these children the one who gave me this job so that you are not threatened by the vicissitudes of life the spirit of faith the spirit of faith the first result for taking out time to know god are you ready for number two supernatural empowerment the second thing you receive as a reward for pressing to know the king is empowerment how many of you know whether traditionally or otherwise that nobody visits a responsible king and goes back empty-handed no it's against even cultural customs of royalty that when kings are aware especially when they prepare for that visitor they are usually tokens it may not be financial but they can give you something that becomes an evidence to all men when people see this they know you have visited this particular king i have lots of gifts that are brought from several nations not even some of their kings just visiting the nation they give me things that are unique to the nations unmistakable you can't confuse it you can know this came from this nation show me your souvenir you met the king empowerment is one of the things we get when we meet him empowerment with wisdom and empowerment with power you don't just know his wisdom and power you draw from it and you go back and display that wisdom when moses encountered him he went with a rod it stopped being called the rod of moses it became the rod of god when he stood before the Sea, he said moses why are you crying stretch forth your rod and tell the nation of israel to walk on dry ground power power the ability to do things the ability to make things happen the ability to make ministry happen by the spirit the ability to make your finances work the ability to push through power supernatural empowerment acts chapter 4 and verse 33 it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all it takes great power to give witness to the fact that jesus is alive you are not just going to tell people he's alive you will have to show my god to demonstrate to principalities and powers someone came for this conference and i want you to know that just knowing that he reigns over all is not enough just knowing that he exerts dominion unquestionable dominion that revelation should do something to you that you live here empowered do you know as man you are the zenith of god's creation that means you should be the greatest reflection of his power not the trees in the forest their productivity should not outshine yours you are the zenith of God's creation. Hallelujah. Great power. Number three. What is the third result of knowing him as king? What is the third result of knowing him as Lord? Even the king eternal. Are you ready? Glory and praise. Glory and praise will spring forth from you eternally. When you know him as king when you know him as lord glory and praise someone say glory someone say praise one more time say glory say praise glory and praise and honor and even adoration the bible says all oh, that men would praise the lord psalm 107 all oh, that men would praise the lord psalm 150 from verse 1 to 6 let everything that has breath praise the lord praise the lord not praise an idol praise is a byproduct of revelation when you know his power when you know his grace and his glory the vastness of his glory you will praise him truly you will you will it doesn't matter whether you know how to sing or not there are times that a song will well out from your spirit even if it's a song that you will just sing the first time and it dies there that song becomes a reaction not a special number i can't be silent not after what i have seen not after what i've seen god now do through my life 
not just the one someone said he did but now that it has come home to you there are many people who will write songs here as a result of what God will do through your life you will tell people I'm not a musician he's just been too powerful in my life I had to write something for someone like Miriam you will write a song I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea hallelujah we need to know God we need to know the king eternal he reigns forever let me tell you this king that you serve will never be dethroned political systems will come and go governments will come and go men will come and go their pride will come and go their wickedness will come and go the trouble that plagues you will come and go but the king eternal then the king immortal do you know what that means you cannot trap him in one place and say he's not aware he's here in this church and yet he's with your children he's everywhere the king the limitations that come with mortality does not happen with him he is not limited in fact my bible says there are certain things that god did not share with man his omnipotence was not shared with man his omnipresence was not shared with man his omniscience was not shared with man these are the things that brand god in a class by himself man is not omnipotent man is not omniscient man is not omnipresent in as much as we are partakers of his divine nature there is an exclusive dimension to his nature that was not given to man so our dominion is not absolute dominion he can live without us reign without us do without us but my god we are helplessly dependent on him that everything that is called god in us is derived even our knowledge is from his light that we see light hallelujah when you know this praise wells up from your spirit do you know why because you will never be a failure not with the king immortal not with the king eternal not with the king invisible the only wise god the bible says be honor and glory forever you will find yourself singing songs you will find yourself dancing with your children you will find yourself rejoicing and people say you are still singing in this evil world and you say i'm singing because wisdom has bailed me out i'm singing because power has delivered me from the desire of my enemies my god is someone really going to rejoice this year does someone really believe that for you the shouts of joy and victory will never depart from your tent because you are the righteous of God hallelujah hallelujah that when men are crying saying there is a casting down because you know the king eternal and you have drawn wisdom from him you have drawn power from him you will circumvent all the vicissitudes of life and you will find yourself just making progress is it not in your bible now thanks be to god which causes us how long always say always one more time always always that a time can come in the life of a believer and a time should come where you check your life and truly there are no prayer requests again your only prayer request is intercession for the loss or for others but as for you god has given you rest round about someone prophesy rest round about one more time rest round about listen i have to say this before we begin to pray and worship i want you to believe god can sort a man god can literally come to you and insist that you will not have anything you have to ask him for again as far as the matters that pertain to life is concerned do you believe that genesis 24 and verse 1 and abraham was old and well stricken in age your bible says the lord had blessed him in how many things all things 
all things all things he spoke to joshua he said not one of the words that god spoke concerning joshua failed all came to pass this is what the king does once upon a time a woman in luke chapter 18 went to meet someone who was a lord in this case the bible called george is that true and she said avenge me my advice you are a judge you are a lord you have the power to avenge the wickedness of the wicked the bible says that man was such a cruel lord he did not regard god he didn't fear god nor regard men but that woman that woman went to him and wearied him and the man said even though i do not regard god nor fear men this woman by her continual coming she will weary me <clears throat> i've made up my mind that in my lifetime my life will be a praise to the name of the lord that the wisdom that comes from knowing him must be demonstrated in my life and the power that justifies knowing him did you hear the use of my words the power that justifies knowing him there is a requisite level of power this power is not for preachers this power is not just for apostles and prophets if it is true that you have met the king the king eternal the king immortal the king invisible the only wise god the all-powerful god something must be deposited in your life it's time for that business to work it's time for your prayer life to work it's time for your spiritual life to work it's time for that marriage to work are there believers in this place it's time for your finances to work now hear me we are going to pray and i'll just allow pastor Nat for maybe five or so minutes he's going to lead us as the spirit leads him in worship i will join in that worship too the king is here you see when the king comes everybody takes off their own crown no you don't find a when it has to do with the worship of the king that model was shown us in the book of revelations even though elders have crowns a crown is not a gift is a reward a testament of consistency a testament of bearing fruit but in the presence of the king you take off your crown and while you worship consistent with what we have learned even from culture the king arises in honor to the worship of the saints and when the king arises do you know the many things that happen if you've forgotten let me just tell you one let god arise if you can get the king to stand up from his throne the bible says for standing up whatever wants to stop you from singing that praise continually he, he becomes his enemy if it is finances he becomes his enemy if it's some sickness in your body the psalmist said if i die who will praise you i need to be alive to praise you huh. I want you to be angry in your spirit don't waste the next five minutes see what you are doing as an act of worship but two things one that you are pouring that alabaster box before the king but whilst you are doing that expect the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god the all-powerful god expect him to arise don't tell him about your finances yet he's not blind don't tell him about your children yet you just pour yourself in worship for the next five minutes the time to make petitions will come after worship no asking for anything you are just pouring yourself in worship and after that time is done you will now speak this was the strategy esther used if esther went to the king and said avenge me something would have happened but she said king i have prepared a feast for you I want the nations to see how glorious you are. This was a woman who they were about to kill her people and her uncle. And then when that happened, the king said, can you do this again? And one time she invited her man and said, join that feast too. The Bible says when it was time for the feast of wines, there was a kind of feast. A woman who did not use sword, yet she killed every enemy that fought God. 
she used her worship she used her honor she used her praise that is the same extra dimension that we're going to get into right now are we together now and the bible says she turned and told the king that there is a traitor within your camp this man wants to fight the purposes ah the king went to the garden to think about it because her man was his right hand man and the moment he returned he now saw the king kneeling before the queen he said you are even close to my wife again and that was the end of that man's story you see but when god wants to disgrace darkness leave him oh he knows what to do yours is to just get him to arise from that throne in worship are you ready now pastor nat please we leave the stage to you as as pastor nat leads us in this worship don't ask god for anything just see yourself as esther forget about her man forget about the diviners who have set a date for your destruction forget about those who said your children will not rise forget about those who want to scatter your marriage you just worship the king the king immortal the king invisible listen it is wrong to worship men but it is not a crime to worship the king Every king is deserving of his worship. Yes, sir. Lift your hands. Whenever the spirit of the Lord is inspires me to write a new song, it means he's in the room. Are you ready? <laughs> hey! Hey! That anointing came tonight. Open your mouth. 
hear me? Listen. If a prophetic song can leave heaven and come like this, it means an idea can leave heaven and come like this. It means a strategy can leave heaven and come like this. Who is God speaking to? Uh, it means an anointing can leave heaven and rest right now. It means speed can leave heaven and rest on your life now. It means breakthrough can leave heaven and rest on your life right now. Are you ready to pray now? Press for one minute. Go ahead and begin to make declarations. Petitions unto the king. Go ahead and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, stepping over my finances, stepping over my spiritual life, stepping over my children, stepping over my job, stepping over every area of my life. Come on, pray. Pray from the depth of your heart.
Bible says, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And an elder tapped me and said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah, even the root of David, my God, I sense a strong anointing in this place. There are mountains that are bigger than you, but the king is about to arise. He's the king eternal, the king immortal, the king invisible. Someone pray, Lord arise for me, over my children, arise for me. Let this mountain give way at the shout of grace, 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 at the shout of grace. Please listen. Listen to me, all of you. Again, this prophetic act is not over yet. I'm going to ask person not to blow a trumpet over you, and I will tell you why. Trumpets signify the end of a season and the beginning of the other. Listen even when the king returns is with the shout of the trumpet by an archangel that is what will signify that this season has come now when that trumpet comes listen this is what i want you to have in your mind look at the page of a book flipping that means it doesn't matter how long that page of your destiny has been please this is the imagination i want you to have at the back of your mind see it flipping he said remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old for behold listen there are things that make a king a king there are emblems tokens one is his crown two is his scepter three is his throne you see that now there is no king without a crown there is no king without a scepter that is a symbol of power there is no king without a throne you will marvel at the testimonies that will come out of this prophetic because i'm sensing in my spirit that there are some of you as you came here you couldn't even listen to the sermon because honestly it says many a day that rise up against me many a day that say where is your help it says but thou O lord you are a shield for me you are my glory and the lifter up of my head it says be anxious for nothing but in everything there is nobody who has lived on earth and has not seen storms. There are times your enemies become bigger than you. You need to step back and call the king to arise. So as this, I'm also receiving this for myself. This is not tell them this, I'm only an usher. Don't waste this prophetic opportunity. Some of you are in debt. Some of you right now, your problem is not concerning you, it's your children something is wrong and the devil wants to use them to send you to your grave on time 
the bible says in everything there is nothing that you cannot bring before god and so as the trumpet comes i like you to see that page that the king the monarch of the universe the one whose authority cannot be contested the one who says and it becomes i want you to see him arise arise imagine yourself as the only person in front don't forget about your neighbor for one moment that the king is arising for you and he's saying what is it that ails you hold on as powerful as john the baptist was personat what the scribes and the pharisees could not do a worshippers worship a young girl during the king's birthday herod she danced and worshiped so much the king said kings were not fools but the king was willing to give half of his kingdom and she went to meet a wicked woman who told her i need the head of john on a platter and because kings don't retreat on their words even though he did not want it that was how the, the greatest prophet by jesus own um, standard he went because of the head a woman danced and she knew how to provoke she didn't tell him i had a need she just celebrated him he felt guilty for leaving her to go back that way he said what do you want these are the mysteries of the kingdom they may not make sense but this is how results happen how does god give an instruction that you come and stand here is that how money will come for you is that how the court case will be reversed anybody who doubts genuine scripture based prophetic actions does not know god god does foolish things what does it mean to go around jericho how do you defeat a nation by going around once every day and then seven times at the end of it he said the healer shout that shout and the bible says the fence sang these are the mysteries of the kingdom how do you give and yet increase how do you withhold and yet tend to poverty is the mystery of the kingdom how do you praise him in a dance he says i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise so by that formula shall i be saved from my enemy when the nations were greater than god's people jehoshaphat spoke by the spirit he said no this is not a battle that you will use sword let the worshipers lead the way and the bible says as they raise songs singing that you are good and your mercies endure forever god laid an ambush among the camp of the enemy that they began to kill one another as if they were not a team for someone who is tired of these mountains for someone who knows that the king eternal does not lie because he's not a man i want you to believe at the blast of the trumpet hallelujah that word halal yeshua is the word we are going to chant hallelujah means praise the lord it literally means halal yeshua invoke his power in praise invoke his majesty in praise are we together now does this make sense to you and so after personal blasts that trumpet we are going to shout a sevenfold hallelujah you just you just do what i'm asking you to do by the spirit and you will watch mountains i tell you it doesn't matter how long and don't say you are not in front here from the front to the back everyone participate in this yes sir Take a paratos who are down mountain before Zerubbabel, who are down mountain before Zerubbabel, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt go down and be made great at the shout of grace, at the shout of grace, at the shout of mercy, as the shout of the king. Mountains, you crumble before the God of Sabaoth. 
are you ready to shout hallelujah now listen i will prompt you and you will shout hallelujah at the seventh time i will do the declaration you would have done your own part so as i count one you shout hallelujah two you shout hallelujah you are not just reciting a chant it means halal yeshua let god arise let the majestic one arise over my case listen as you are shouting it i'd like you to see mountains going down see stories being rewritten are you ready now listen this includes those who are following i know there are many who are following online following in your home you may feel sad that you don't have the opportunity to be here at this exalted altar but don't you worry you can simulate an atmosphere of praise right in your house right in your car and whilst we are shouting if it means to park your car for one moment and obey this prophetic action and watch the god of heaven are you ready now number one Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Are you ready for the final shout? Number seven. Every mountain, every mountain standing before you. Ah, the king brings it down. I stand in faith with the graces that are here represented in this house and I declare for everyone who came here crying in the name that is above all names may my God wipe your tears may my God wipe your tears I pray for everyone here you are standing right in front of shame many have concluded that it, there is nothing that can be done i pray for you by this time tomorrow may the god of heaven rewrite your story by this time tomorrow may the god of heaven visit you in a way that will bring praise to his name hear me every financial calamity here i don't care how long it has been in the name of jesus because the king eternal the king immortal has arisen may god raise men to bail you out i say to a believer may god raise men to bail you out may god raise men to bail you out in the name of jesus hear me i've been a victim of sickness before 
there are diseases that are unto death there are sicknesses that the moment you see it on a person's body you know the spirit of death has come because the end of that sickness is death are we together now i want to cause those diseases whether in your body or that of your loved ones don't allow your loved ones just die for nothing take advantage of this atmosphere hallelujah that when you see people tell you there are certain things in my body you just know that the spirit of death has come in the name of Jesus and by the mercies of the God of David anyone here with any infirmity cancer heart problems bone problems for you or for your loved one in the name of Jesus Christ we declare that death is caused from your life sickness and disease is caused from your body sickness and disease is caused from your body sickness and disease is caused from your body in the name of Jesus for someone I'm hearing open doors open doors may not be for everyone but I'm speaking to someone who is a receiver may my God open doors for you destiny doors destiny doors even ancient doors may they be open here and theta the final prayer for you and you are back to your seat for someone standing here your problem may not be anything material it may just be that an attack came upon your spiritual life and in a strange way your passion for God just went down in a way that is still surprising you right now prayer life down word study life down consecration and your things for God down passion for the house of God down there needs to be a resurrection uh, because if the only thing you receive are just material things and restoration at the expense of your spiritual vibrancy it was a bad bargain bad bargain are we together hmm. these are the days when you need strength these are the days when you cannot lose your spiritual texture and fire it is a risk a risk that can cost you your life because the Bible says be sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil that he goes to and fro that includes Lagos searching and seeking for whom he will be devour. the question is what is the condition for his finding a victim while men slept that's the condition the enemy could not have come to plant but that men slept so the Bible says awake thou that sleepest and Christ shall give you light can I speak over your life in the name of Jesus I agree with every grace here represented anyone's prayer life you used to have prophetic encounters and dreams because of the extent of your spiritual vibrancy right now that vista has been closed you don't see you don't hear you don't nothing I pray for you in the name of Jesus the same way the hair of Samson came back may your prayer life be restored may your passion for God be restored may your word study life be restored may your passion for the things of God the house of God be restored in the name of Jesus thank you Jesus wave your hands as you return back to your seat god bless you please return back to your seat rejoicing return back to your seat rejoicing hallelujah i'm going to step out of the way for one minute now and i'm going to allow pastor not to just even if it's for a minute or two i just sense to see press on with this song for one minute but who is in this place who wants to tell Jesus, I need you? Who is in this place? Who is saying, Apostle, if you will give me one minute with Jesus, I'm not ashamed. Ah, no, I'm not ashamed of the crowd. I love Jesus enough to leave my seat and come and stand here. Who is saying, I need my relationship restored? I'm tired of playing church and I mean business with Jesus. 
I'm calling for that one person. I'm going to count one to five. Please, I want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here as we celebrate them. The king needs you. You need the king. Come. One. Don't sit back when you know the Lord is asking you to come and make it right with him. Come. It's a new season for you. Come. This is the best we can do for them. Let's encourage them as they come. Two. Anyone who is coming this way, please. Three. Keep clapping. Four. Hallelujah. Now, listen. I want to thank you for this the courage to make this noble decision it is the greatest decision any man can make you can receive breakthrough but without jesus you are still going to hell it's as simple and as honest as that i want to thank you my brothers and sisters for making this declaration can you say after me as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word you are my savior you are my lord you are my king I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that I cannot help myself. Tonight, I receive your life into my spirit. And I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I live for Jesus all the days of my life. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you so much for these precious ones who have come. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching